G'day, Colour Sands here. How you going? Uh, finally, we've got some good news in Australian politics. Yes, this week, Tony Abbott has stood up decisively for democracy. Some of his colleagues in the Liberal Party had the temerity to ask for a conscience vote on marriage equality. But Tony was on to them. Oh, it sounds very liberal and very fair to talk about consciences, but what about the voters? What about those people who voted for a coalition that stood clearly against allowing two people who love each other to get married in order to remove a major issue of imposing second-class status on same-sex relationships and help overcome a long-standing, deep-seated sense of persecution and alienation that have uh, been felt uh, by the gay and lesbian community? No. <laughs> Tony Abbott will not doubt those voters. He will not backtrack. They voted for a party with outdated, backward and bigoted views, and Tony Abbott won't betray them. I mean, the very thought of our Prime Minister going back on a promised policy. I mean, aside, obviously, from, you know, promising no cuts to health or education or to, to pensions and no new tax rises, or no cuts to the ABC and, and SBS and no return to work choice like laws. But, I mean, if you exclude such uh, petty things as destroying universal access to health care and education and dismantling the social safety net while slashing jobs and kicking pensioners while giving even more tax breaks to his rich mates, I mean, if you ignore those distractions and focus on the key issue of denying equality to same-sex relationships, then no one can accuse our Prime Minister of not being a man of principle. And he's willing to accept the will of the people. I mean, not straight away or anything, but he has said that maybe after the next election he might be willing to accept a plebiscite on whether or not uh, to allow the 21st century. And this is very generous when you consider his own very clearly, strongly held position against the 21st century. I mean, as our Prime Minister has said, for many, many centuries, it's been a settled position on it not being the 21st century. Indeed, from time immemorial, no one has suggested it was the 21st century at all until a, a new uh, a vocal social movement arose very recently, in about the past 15 years or so, to suggest it was. And for his part, one strong opponent of the 21st century, Erica Betts, condemned it as just the latest fad and pointed to all those people who lived and died in the 20th century without seeing any need whatsoever to live in the 21st. Of course, some within the Liberal Party have criticised the fact that the Nationals were included in the party room discussions on this, claiming that this stacked the vote with opponents of the 21st century. After all, these Nationals are people convinced that it's still the 19th century, and frankly, given all the hipsters with their Ned Kelly beards they see every time they go order a coffee when they're up in the big smoke, it's really not that surprising. But still, I suppose it is nice uh, for supporters of marriage equality to, to be offered a plebiscite at all. Almost as if a sustained grassroots movement from below has won over the vast majority of society and forced the issue onto the agenda. I mean, either that, or our politicians have suddenly discovered consciences to fight over. I've been Carlos Sands, and uh, you enjoy whichever century you're in. See ya.